ask that you would turn to Proverbs, the fourth chapter. This morning, as I awakened very early this morning, around 5.23, and began to worship the Lord and thank Him for waking me up another day and magnify the Lord's work. The earth is His to declare his kingdom come and ask him to cover the earth with the glory. Cover the earth, Father. And singing unto the Lord, what a beautiful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. Great is our God. Great is our Lord. And I opened up to our prayer, our prayer focus, because we're in our eight days of prayer. And today was my confirmation because we were supposed to pray at the gate of the heart. And those scriptures, Psalm 19 and 14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. 28.7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song will I praise him. Nine in one, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. 73, 26, my flesh and my heart faileth. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I said, okay, Father, if I don't get a confirmation from anywhere else, I got it. Thank you. I got it already. I'm ministering this morning to you. The subject is guard your heart. Guard your heart. Can you say that with me? Guard your heart. Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make me your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I praise it by heart to you. Of the mountain 
when the fog clears. Somebody already got a deposit. Say, when the fog clears. When the fog clears. You can see it clearly. When the fog clears, you can see it clearly. One more time. When the fog clears, you can see it clearly. Think about that. A beautiful, beautiful mountain that's hidden behind fog. Almost 365 days or 366 days but it can only be seen 20 days a year. And so the writer of that book says, this is how most people live their lives. Yes. In a fog. Oh, my. But here's my worship, Lord. And here's my heart. Take joy in it. So again, the subject is guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23 in the New Living Translation says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. In other words, the wise man is saying, watch over your heart. To watch over our hearts with all diligence means to be alert or watchful to Satan's subtle tactics at all times. And we can learn about how to do this from Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And you can turn to that passage of scripture. I am going to continue and read in another translation. If you have the King James translation, you'll be reading it differently. But I am going to read it from an Amplified. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ is yours. When we guard something, we watch over it with special care and stand ready to protect it at all times. To me, Proverbs 4.23 means that I am to be alert, to be conscious and aware of my thoughts and attitudes, and to not let the enemy or anything else poison my heart with lies and deceits. Yeah. Many wrong and vicious thought patterns and attitudes are built up in an individual little by little. It doesn't happen quickly, but little by little. We must remember that Satan is very patient, and he is relentless. So we must be even more relentless than he is and guard our heart with all diligence. Sometimes when going through a day, one may catch themselves thinking some thoughts that are really unproductive, unkind, and suspicious of others. However, if you are one who has learned from God's word what to do with these thoughts, you will immediately cast these thoughts down and choose to think on something good. Something good. The scripture says, casting down imaginations, every vain thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into the obedience of the Lord Jesus. This is what we should incorporate in our daily declarations. This is how we are to guard our hearts. We need to also be careful not to spend too much time with people who are given to gossiping, complaining, and being negative. One of the things that Apostle would say, if you called him or called him, he would say, thank God for life. Yes. How are you, Apostle? Thank God for life. No matter how bad he was feeling, he wouldn't confess those things. He'd say, thank God for life. And he would also say, I would hear him, and I'm not sure if there were any in here that can attest to it, but he would also say, 
Speak positive things. He also preached a message, speak life. So he was always bent, and that's a good thing. He was always bent on saying something positive. Proverbs 4.23 and other scriptures describe the significance of the heart. In this brief passage, the wise King Solomon identified four principles of guarding our heart. The first one is recognize the treasure. Look at someone and say, recognize, recognize the treasure. You know, sometimes it was a, a while back when uh, he would throw this word out, you need to recognize. <laughs> and maybe I can, you know, just bring in this. The next time somebody brings you a piece of gossip, something negative, and something to complain about, just tell them you need to recognize and just walk away. That's right. <laughs> Don't even dignify whatever they have said. Just say. You need to what? Recognize. And you don't point to yourself, but you need to point up. You need to recognize. You know tonight they're going to be playing ball. <laughs> Y'all know I was going to come in here. And I didn't have my hat on. Didn't have a t-shirt on. T-shirts. Because we got two. This church is rooting for both. <laughs> we root for the Warriors and the Cavaliers. Can I get an amen? The ball players, some of them that have the Holy Spirit, because last night I was watching the yes. Super Bowl celebration and they were praising. The NFL choir was singing. Those fellows were singing and rocking. About 11 o'clock, 11.30 last night, Tamala Man and David Man, they were on there along with John Gray, and they were, you know, saying, okay, now we're going to, finally, we're going to hear from the NFL choir. I said, well, wow. And they got up there, and they sang. They, they, they sang. <laughs> One of the football players, he excited the rest because they never thought it was in him, but he got to go and so until they were like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but notice sometimes when some of the ball players that are saved, because some of them are saved, mm -hmm. they'll go like this. So the next time somebody walks up to you with something, to complain about something negative, something that is gossip, preach it, preach it. just say, you need to recognize. Oh, come on, y'all don't have the whole thing. Right. You need to recognize. <laughs> okay? But the first point is, recognize the treasure. That wasn't in my notes. That was the Holy Spirit giving That's me something. All right. That's all right. Two phrases jump off the page when reading this passage. Above all else and wellspring of life. To experience the fullness of our faith and partake of the blessings of God, we must recognize the treasure of the heart. You take the heart out of a person and they're gone. Yeah. 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 Right. That's true. That's true. We need to recognize... The treasure. Above all else communicates priority. Above all else communicates what? Priority. And wellspring of life communicates a glorious promise. <coughs> wellspring of life communicates what? A glorious promise. The text identifies guarding your heart as more important than anything else. Think about this. To the Christian community that cherishes the doctrine of self-denial as one of the key aspects of following Christ, guarding your heart appears to be a contradiction. We expect to take up our cross, not take care of our heart. Think about it. I am convinced that Proverbs 4.23-27 through 27 contains another great paradox of kingdom living. Could it be that we can only die to self when we guard our heart? You got that? Jesus declared that we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's Mark 12, 30. When describing the kingdom of God, Jesus revealed the things that come out of the heart defile a man. He also taught, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. 
Think about what you meditate on. The meditations of my heart. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. For out of the heart, as you're meditating, whatever is in that heart is going to come out. Are you with me? The Apostle Paul prayed for the saints that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. We find similar instruction in the Old Testament where we are commanded to trust the Lord with all our heart and to hide God's word in our heart. The heart is a treasure. Yes. The prophet Samuel revealed that God does not evaluate people by outward appearance, but he looks at the heart. Perhaps the most significant verse describing the treasure of the heart is found in Romans 10 and 9, which says a person may be saved by believing where? In your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. The heart is a mysterious spiritual reality that allows us to experience the fullness of life. It includes emotion, but the heart is not limited to emotion. According to scripture, the heart can be grieved, troubled, broken, pierced, divided, and joyful. Think about all those things. The heart can be grieved, troubled, broken, pierced, divided, and joyful. And now might I just say that even in all of those things, there might be a mixture of all that in this house. Amen. But when the Spirit of the Lord comes, mm -hmm. whatever sacrifice of praise that you have given Him, He comes down and He consumes that. He knows how to do that. Yes. Yes. Just in a blink. That's why it's so important for us to follow what He has commanded. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and to be thankful remember last week the password for going in is thank you did you tell him thank you when you woke up this morning yes or did you complain and say oh i don't know what i'm gonna wear oh i got a bad hair day Oh, I don't feel like shaving. Oh, I don't have enough time to eat. Oh, how long is service going to be because of the game tonight? I got to go and get my cupboard stored up with all kinds of chewing foods. Oh, I hope it's quick, fast, in a hurry, Lord. Oh, I don't have any gas. Oh, I don't have any money. Did somebody get it? Oh, Lord, it's hot. Oh, God, that was oh, me. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I got to wash dishes. Oh, I was supposed to wash those dishes last night. Oh, I was supposed to vacuum. Oh, I was supposed to clean up my room. I wanted to wear this, but it's dirty. Oh, <laughs> these stockings are run. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Whoa, that wasn't in my notes. That was good. But did you complain? Oh, my driver is here and I'm not ready. <laughs> Remember those days? Yes. yes. Thank you. Well, the word is thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Charles Ryrie defined the heart as the very core of our life. Our heart is the truest expression of who we really are. That's awesome. God is the greatest surgeon, heart surgeon. He yes. knows our heart. Yes. He, knows yes. us. he knows every fiber 
of our being, yes. every hair follicle, gotta say hair follicle nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it. He knows the desires of our heart. And remember a few weeks ago, I shared with you, he sent us. Yes, that's right. I said this on Main Street. Anyone remember me saying that on Main Street? That we are not our own? That we belong to the Lord? Yes. That we were sent here? Yes. Just revisited that a few weeks ago. Yeah. But we were sent here. Yes, we were. And we went to Psalms to prove it. We, we were sent to this planet. Yes, we were. This is not a spurious doctrine. It is real. Our life is not our own. That's right. He owns us. Okay, let me go on. The second point is this. Prioritize the task. Thank you. Having identified the biblical mandate for us to recognize the treasure of the heart, we must prioritize the task of guarding our heart. If I ask any church to identify the top Christian disciplines, how do you think guarding your heart would rank? We could expect answers like worship, prayer, Bible study, evangelism, evangelism, feeding the hungry, clothing, the sick, all of those things. These answers are correct, and they certainly play a major role in guarding our heart. However, it strikes me as odd that the common or I should say, the command to guard our heart. Rarely, if ever, receives the priority that the scriptures attach to it. I'll say that again. The command to guard our heart rarely, if ever, receives the priority that the scriptures attach to the heart. As previously mentioned, we find the instruction to guard our heart unfamiliar because of it. Taking care of a heart is a selfish pursuit. Most of us can testify of an experience where someone used the lame excuse of selfishness to justify an ungodly decision. Yeah. Abandoning something that you're responsible to carry out. I won't be very detailed with it, but you may know someone who decided, well, they're just gonna up and just take off. God's told me that he wants me to do such and such, and they have abandoned their responsibility. This is what God wants me to do, and it just makes no sense at all. But they say, God told me to do so and so, and they'll fly off and leave their priority, their responsibility. That makes no sense, does it? We must understand that guarding your heart is not selfishness or irresponsibility. The unbalanced emphasis on certain aspects of faith has contributed to the neglect of guarding the heart. And we must be careful not to forfeit the treasures of the heart because of selfish abuses. Mm. A second factor that has prevented saints, and I have to say this, from making the matters of the heart a priority is the limitation of guarding your heart to purity. Striving for moral purity is an admirable and necessary part of following Christ. We will consider protecting the heart from trash in this next section, in section three, when I get to it. But guarding is more than protection. It includes 
pursuing and providing. It includes pursuing and providing. There was a Reader's Digest article offered, and it offered an amusing analysis of some of the dieting trends affecting our culture. We have all kinds of dieting trends. Oh, yeah. Apple cider vinegar, lemon mm -hmm. <laughs> water. The Japanese eat little fat and suffer fewer heart attacks than Americans or the British. The French eat a lot of fat and suffer fewer heart attacks than the U.S. or British. <laughs> the Italians drink a lot of red wine and have a lower risk of heart problems than their Western neighbors. What can we conclude from these facts? <laughs> you can eat whatever you want, but speaking English will kill you. <laughs> Guarding your heart is more than feeding your soul than avoiding sin. When our heart is strong, we are able to resist the temptations that cause many saints to stumble. Yeah. When our heart is strong, we are able to resist the temptations that cause many saints to stumble. Guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. Guard it. Let me say this. When you begin to date, you are supposed to start gathering data. Not get so caught up with someone wants to see it, eat with it. Start gathering data and guard your heart. Why is it? Good. That's all right. Good. All right. You have to. Because they come, let me tell you, when you start seeing someone, and, and, and the old timers will call a suitor. How many how many know that word? Yeah. Suitor. They come to check you out. Check them out. Amen. <laughs> it's important to do that. Check them out. Male or female. Check out how he treats his mother or father right. or his siblings. Right. Check out how she treats her mother or father or siblings. Check them right. out thoroughly. Thoroughly. I had one teacher. Say, I say thoroughly. She says, no, thoroughly. <laughs> it wasn't right, <laughs> but she was a teacher, so you had to say it to please her. But check the person out. Check them out when they get see when they get angry. What do they do? Yeah. Uh, where are you? That's right. That they throw tantrums. Uh, and right. they throw things. Well, why am I going there? Why am I going See if they get stingy. Oh, wow. <laughs>
mailman didn't come back. Plan. Go in there. But it's important to check it out. Amen? Amen. Guarding your heart is more about feeding your soul than avoiding sin. Yeah. Wow. I'll just leave it there. Yeah. Kind of repeating it. But you need to check things out. Amen. Yeah. Because think about it. The enemy 24-7 is out to attack your heart. Yeah. Yeah. We declare daily. Yeah. We bind heart attacks and strokes and aneurysms and heart, all kinds of things. We declare that. We make declarations. You've got to guard your heart because the devil wants to attack the heart. Yes. That's the core. Yeah. If he can get in there. And remember, he's very patient. Mm -hmm. He will get in there. Anybody ever suffer? Challenge, I'm not talking about a heart attack, but I mean how the enemy will try to come in and attack your emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Try to get at your will. Yes. Hurt your feelings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Crush. Go to your notes. Yes. That the book of Proverbs identifies some things to avoid, but it also contains numerous instructions to pursue wisdom, grace, discipline, and life. Number three. Minimize the trash. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I really want to say eliminate the trash. <laughs> because when you have trash around too long, what does it do? It Woo! <laughs> so you want to get rid of the trash. So just put eliminate the trash. Because trash is just trash. No matter how pretty the canister is, you've got all kinds of nice canisters that you can walk up and, it, it, what is it, and you step on, and it opens up, and it closes slow. What's the other little thing that y'all talk to, this little, Alexis, open the garbage can. <laughs> Believe me, if it's not done, it will be done. Oh, yeah. Someone's going to come up with some way of how the garbage can even go to the dumpster. Because how many people don't like to take the garbage out? Just raise your hand. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch. I could tap a whole bunch of you on the shoulder. You don't like to take the garbage out. Okay. And wait till she's finished. <laughs> Guarding your heart includes seeking God, but we cannot ignore the instruction to eliminate the trash from our lives. The verses that follow the command to guard our hearts describe putting away perverse speech, looking straight ahead, and choosing good paths. These verses are similar to the New Testament challenge contained in Hebrews 12, 1, and two, therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily entangles us and run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith. Both of these passages reveal the need to remove some things from our lives so that we can run the race of faith. The sinister trap of legalism ensnares those who make removal the goal of faith instead of removing sin for the purpose of going forward in faith. Wow. All right. Did y'all get that? Yes. Sing it again. I got permission of you. The sinister trap, the sinister trap of legalism ensnares those who make removal the goal of faith instead of removing sin for the purpose of going forward in faith. Because we need to go forward in faith. Some trash is easy to identify. Moral corruption, perverse behavior, evil acts that harm others stand in bold opposition to God's will for your life. Other trash is more difficult to discern and to remove. 
a lack of faith, yeah. unwillingness to forgive, mm -hmm. materialism, pride, Whoa. false belief systems. These can <coughs> stop the flow of the well springs of life. Just like the easily identified sins, trash, big or small, is still trash. Amen. We should embrace the challenge that the Apostle Paul gave Timothy to purify himself so that he would be a special instrument, set apart, useful to the Master, prepared for every good work. You'll find that in 2 Timothy 2 and 24. I just want to read. Is that okay? Because I'm about to close. I have, and I'm not going to close five and six times. <laughs> because we have had a visitation. And the servant of the Lord, remember all of us are what? And the servant of the Lord must not strive. The servant of the Lord must not what? Whoa. We don't have good understanding of that. Must not strive. Give me a message translation. Give it to me. Love it. Thank you, Jesus. Not be argumentative. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that, that really <laughs> <laughs> they must not be what? Argumentative. But a gentle listener and a teacher who keeps cool. Mm -hmm. Working firmly but patiently with those who refuse to obey. Parents. Parents. <laughs> Parents. Yes, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Keep on love. You catch more bees with honey than vinegar. Amen to that. That's what that's what Stephanie says. Remember Stephanie? Oh yes. <laughs> pow pow Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> So we can't be argumentative. Can't hold grudges. Why am I going here? No. Give me my stuff. Give me my stuff back. I want it all. <laughs> but we can't be that way, amen? That's right, amen. <laughs> Number four. <coughs> energize with truth. We're going to energize our heart with what? Truth. A fourth strategy for guarding your heart is to energize with truth. I want you to pay close attention to what Proverbs 4.20 says. The instruction says, pay attention and listen closely. And, and I really believe that that's what's happening in here. Is anyone learning something today? Yes. 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 This emphasis to give careful attention to divine truth is followed by the promise of life and health. Let me tell you something. The more you carry around all that weight and you're so worried and stressed out and freaking out and flipping out and your heart your heart is heavy. Yes. Your heart, our heart was not meant to deal with all those things. Yes. You need to recognize it. The heart is a treasure. Yes. Eliminate trash. Amen. Get rid of all that stuff and live. Live like you love. Yes. Yes. Everybody yes. hear that song? Live like you love. Live like you love. Walk like you're 
free. And you can't when you're all heavy laden with a whole bunch of... The Lord commands us to cast every care upon Him yeah. because He cares for us. Yeah. He, can, he can deal with it. He knows how to deal with it. And with, the, and with you, many times, we look at the other person first. Yeah, yeah. He knows how to deal with us. So we, it's, we need to empty out. Do you ever take the trash can out full of garbage and bring it back in full of garbage? You leave it out there, right? But some people, some people take trash out and put a sign, I'm taking trash in. I welcome it. You with me? Our hearts were not meant to carry these things. I hope this is it's not coming across harsh. There's no shade. I'm not throwing any shade. I'm only throwing the truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I get it. Maybe you need to put a caption underneath. She's not having twitches. <laughs> we need the truth. Yes. Yes. We need truth. Yes. Jesus is the way, the truth. And he is the... He said the truth would make us free. Solomon exhorts his son to discern and hold the instruction close to his heart. We live in a world that is often opposed to truth. Can I get an amen? amen. Our culture promotes tolerance over truth. But the wise king reminds us that there is a difference between right and wrong, good and bad, righteousness and evil. Level paths that have a solid foundation lead to success. But evil and unstable choices will lead to destruction. We must also appreciate the difference between facts and truth. It's not enough just to know facts about the faith. Facts provide information, but truth produces transformation. Oh, all right. Oh, I like that. Facts provide information, but truth produces transformation. Through application of keeping the truth in your heart, we advance in the journey of faith instead of swerving off course. Most individuals who would identify themselves as Christians know the facts of faith. They know about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. They know about prayer. They know about witnessing. But precious few pray to know the Lord and the power of a resurrection in an effort to share Christ more effectively. It's important to be transformed. I remember months ago the Lord said, you can know, but all that you know, you need to walk it out. He said, you need to tell that. And I didn't have the whole message until today. So it's important to know facts. But it's more important to know the truth and allow the truth to produce transformation. And you can give your heart to the Lord. The moment you give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, allow the transformation to begin. To those of you who received baptism of the Holy Spirit last week, let no one shame you and have you, not even yourself, by saying, it's just a little bit. When I first received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was not speaking a lot of times. There was just one little syllable. That was it. <laughs> But I prayed until that one syllable came out. 
me. And I just continued. And then, I don't know when it happened, but all of a sudden, there was a full woo. I was like, where did that come from? So don't be ashamed. Don't compare yourselves with anyone else who speaks a lot of tongues. Just let that one syllable, or if some of you got two syllables, and if some of you got three syllables, and if it seems like you're stammering, you're in the word. Because it says, with stammering lips in another tongue. So don't be ashamed and say, I don't speak in tongues like Pastor Rudolph or Sister Terry, Mom, or Dad. I don't go. Just hang out there with that one syllable and watch the Lord develop such an awesome prayer tongue and you'll be like, where did that come from? And you give him all the glory. Yeah. So I don't know what the enemy may have tried to mess with your minds this week, but I was ready for it. Because I was battling and I said, no, devil, you are lying. Because they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and it wasn't like years ago. Can I, can I go here? Years ago, you might have been in the prayer meeting. Oh, night long. Yes, Lord. And you might have fasted for 40 days. And your knees were knocking and you were shaking. And you, and, 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 and you might have heard someone say, it's all over you. And you were waiting for the tongue to come out of your mouth. And, and it didn't happen. And you went home all sad. Can I give an amen? Amen. amen. Mm -hmm. But the Lord has given us wisdom not to overlook what he will do, but just to let you know you got confirmation. Because we're living in the last days. And last week when the Holy Spirit moved through here the way he moved through here, thank the Lord, thank you, Lord. he announced, I am here to baptize. Yes. In fact, days before, and I'm going to finish this up, I only got two or three more lines. Days before, I heard the Spirit of the Lord, I woke up, I heard the Spirit of the Lord said, He said, there are baptisms in the house. I said, oh, good Lord, okay, then maybe I should announce if there's anyone that wants to be baptized. And nothing came of it. So last Sunday night I said, whoa, you told me. You told me there were baptisms in the house. And I was thinking water baptisms when he was saying spirit baptisms. He brought it back. The Holy Spirit will bring all things back to your remembrance. That's one of the things that you all need to know. The Holy Spirit will bring all things back to your remembrance. And he brought that back to my mind. He said, that's what I meant when I said there are baptisms in the house. Isn't God an awesome God? Let me wrap this up. Guarding your heart involves energizing your life with the transforming truth of God's love and his word. Never treat the scripture as a collection of facts. Pay attention and listen closely because God's word is alive. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. The prophet Jeremiah described God's word as a fire that burns in a man's soul. And a hammer that shatters a rock to pieces. Mm. Both things. In my conclusion, I'll say guarding the heart is critical to experiencing all that God desires for your life. When we recognize the treasure, prioritize the task, eliminate the trash, energize with truth, we place ourselves in a position to receive the blessings of God. Some people are looking for blessings. Yes. I'm expecting y'all to say all of us. Yes. We're looking for blessings. Amen? Amen. And know this one thing. You can do all those things outwardly. You can tithe. You can you do all of these things. But if on the inside, the heart needs an adjustment. Mm -hmm. If the heart needs resuscitate. Yes. If the heart needs purging. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, this is, this is just, there's one thing that you lack. Let me deal with your heart. And all of a sudden, he breaks open any blockages. He's a blaster. <laughs> breaks it open and causes, and once you allow the Lord, I'm telling you, humbling yourself before the mighty hand of God and doing all he says to do, when he said, delayed 
the obedience is still disobedience. So when the Lord says now to do so and so, when do you do it? Tomorrow? Now. Do it. Whether you understand it or not, just do it because the Lord commands it. Because when the Spirit of the Lord moves and says to do something, do it because you will receive a blessing. Your heart is the navigational equipment of your life. It must stay aligned with God. By guarding your heart, you stay locked on to God's will, locked in to God's will, and the wellsprings of life are yours. Can you put your hands together and give God a praise? If you receive that word, it can help you. A wonderful treasure. It's a life spring. Every day, ask the Lord, examine my heart. Create in me a clean heart, Father. Renew in me a right spirit. Just make sure, the Lord, I want my heart to be right because I want to do everything. And let me know, let you know, I remind you that when the heart is right, the anointing will flow. You can't. That's another message. When your heart is right, the anointing will flow. It will be pure. If there's someone here and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to say that He loves you. And He wants what's best for you.